Hello, so today we are doing this lit code problem called longest harmonious subsequence. And so it is defined, um, so basically a harmonious array is an array where the difference between the maximum value and the minimum value is exactly one. And we get this array and we want to find the length of its longest harmonious subsequence among all of the possible subsequence. And so remember, subsequence is different than subarray, which, which for example, for the subsequence, we could take three and jump like, and not take these two, three numbers and then take like, let's say two, three. And so that's the definition here. <clears throat> and so how can we solve this problem? Um, so for example, for this um, array here, um, the longest one where the minimum, the difference between the min and the max is um, one is this, uh, this subsequence here that goes from here to here and then from this to this. Because the min here is two and the max is three. So the difference between um, min and max, so the difference between max and min is equal to one. That's why um, that's the <clears throat> the longest uh, one in this array. Um, so one way we can solve this problem is, so let's say, let's use sorting here. So let's sort this um, array. Then that would mean we have, we would have um, two twos here, and then another two, two threes, five and seven. So once it's sort sorted, we know that in order to find the, the longest one, we just need to take an element and go through all the elements equal to it or equal to it plus one. So for one, we will take all the elements equal to one and all those equal to one plus one, which is all those equal to two. And so that means one, two, two, and so we will stop here. And the length of this one is four. So at this point, our res would be equal to four, our result. And then we would need to go to the next element, one plus one. If, if there is another one here, we should skip it since um, since we already calculated um, the, the the longest harmonious subsequence, including that number. And so we would just take the next element, which is two here. And so we will include all twos and two plus one, which is three. And so that means we will get to here and this one here is three five this is so it's bigger than four and so our result is now um five then we'll, we'll skip also the elements equal to two to not redo the calculation again and go to three at that point we would have all those equal to three or equal to three plus one which is four and since there is only three we stop here, and that two, that is two. It's not bigger than um, five, and so our res stays as five. And same thing with five. We will go to five. Um, same thing. Res is zero. So we our uh, same thing. The length is zero since there is no six. For seven, um, we are looking for seven and eight. And since we have just seven, the res is just zero, and so we keep. Our final result here is five, which is the result that we got here. And so you can see, we can just code the exact thought process that we had here, right? And so let's do this step by step. So the first thing we did is we initialize it. We can initialize our result and um, to be zero. And let's call it max lh, for example. Or let's just call it rest. That'll be easier. And um, we need to sort. So the first thing we did here was sorting the array. So we need to do that. So let's say, let's sort our array or our list. And let's just put the length here to help us a little bit. And we need, um, we need like a, a pointer here to iterate through the list. So let's say i to be equal to zero. Um, let's put it here, and now we can go through the array. And so we need to go through it while i is less than n. And we need two other pointer. We need another pointer that 
can get us here, right? Um, and so let's call that J. And J will initialize that J into um, I first, right? We, you also notice that in order to go to, so this was the first iteration, we needed I and J here. So let's just note them here. We needed I and we needed J, but we also needed another pointer to be able to identify the next value that we will start from, which is the first occurrence of the element plus one, which let's call that K here. So we need to also calculate this K. So let's just assume that it's equal to I and then find its real value later because what we need to do is make I um, equal to that value, right, plus one. So if K was here, we will need to put K um, plus one to be the next iteration. Basically, if there was one here, then our K would be here. And then in order to find the, where to start the next iteration, we'll need to do k plus one. Okay. Now um, let's 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 calculate this. So for j, we know that we need to continue while um, we didn't get off the array. The array is not finished, and um, our j value is either the value itself or the value plus one. And so we can say while it's less or equal than of i plus one. Since it's sorted, we know that we'll get only equal or the element plus one. And if that happens, then we can increase our j to go to the next value, right? Now, um, one thing you can notice here is, now we need to advance k, because k needs to advance to all the elements equal to the value at names of i, right? And so we need to check, um, of course, that it's not um, more than the array length. And while we are still, j is still equal to i. If it starts to be equal to i plus one, we don't want that. We want to keep k here so that we can increase it to get the next iteration um, start, right? And so that means we would have this. And while that is happening, we keep assigning k to j. Um, and now we need to um, now we need to calculate um, our result that we did here by calculating this range, right? But for that to happen, we need um, one condition. We need to make sure that that it's not like it's not an array like this. We need to make sure that it's not an array like um, one one, one, right? Because if that's the case, then we don't want to count this. We want this to be zero. So we need to safeguard against that. And so the way to do that, we will just check if uh, j minus one, right, is different than i, because i is the start of the range. If our element that we're calculating the range for is equal, then we don't want to calculate the max. And so why we are doing this j minus one is because we do j plus one and then we exit. And so we want to um, we want to do minus one to get the, the last um, inter range interval thing. Uh, and so we do this equal to max of res um, and j minus i. And that's about uh, it. We can now return our result. Um, okay, let's run this. <coughs> um, yep, we are missing this. <coughs> mm. Okay, we need J here. <coughs> Okay, so that passes for this. Let's test our case that I said here. Make sure we didn't miss that one. Okay, let's test other um, edge cases, empty list. 
and with just one value and with just two values that should work okay so i think we can submit this okay so that works there is a, another simple solution that we can use here this one because of the pointer um thing is a little bit complex so <clears throat> let's try here another solution <clears throat> so this time um let's try uh to use a hash map, right? So the way we are going to do this is we have this hash map. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so let's take one. So one would be the key. And we are going to look for values. We are going to just count the occurrences of each um, value, basically. So one here, it occurs only once. And so we, <clears throat> we put the value as one. Two occurs three times, so put three, three occurs two times, um, five occurs just once, and seven occurs just once, right? So what we're going to do is once we have the map, we will go through it and count the number of occurrence of the key and key plus one. And so, for example, for one, we will count the occurrences of one plus the occurrences of um, <coughs> plus the occurrences of, let's say this map here is called occurrence, right? And so, and occurrences of two if there is one, right? So that would be one plus three, which is four. So our result here will be four. And then, for two, we will count the occurrence of. For two, we will count the occurrence of two and two plus one, which is three, and that would give us three plus two, which is five. And so our, that's bigger than four, so our result becomes five. And we'll keep doing this until we are done. For for example, seven. So we'll keep doing this. Um, and for seven, for example, that would be the occurrences of seven and of eight but eight is not there so its occurrence is like zero and so that would be one plus zero which is one so our result stays as five so in order to get this in python we can just first use the counter to get this hash map we don't have to calculate it ourselves um and so that would mean we can just from collections we can import counter and uh get the occurrence map and let's initialize our result variable. So that would be counter of this. And after that, we'll just go through the values. And um, we can just check if there is the, the next value. Otherwise, we can just keep it zero. So we can check if there is new plus one. In that case, we would say res is going to become the max of res and of the appearance of nim plus the occurrence of the value plus one. And at the end, we can just return that. So let's run this. <coughs> so we have a syntax error if, yeah. Okay, let's run it on this. Good. Um, now here you can see we are using this counter which itself does a loop right so um so basically what we want if you want to do it in a single loop without having to first calculate the occurrence and then go and calculate the the uh, the result we can do it in one loop and the way we can do that is very simple too so let's just initialize this to a map and then do it as we go basically and so that means here we can say, okay, the occurrence of names is, the value is, um, if there was one before, so the previous number of occurrence, if there is nothing zero, we just put zero plus one. And instead of doing this, we are going to check if there is a plus one already in the occurrence. If there is, then our result would be the max of res, um, and occurrence of nim plus occurrence of nim plus one, which is the same as we did before. 
But here, since we didn't put all the counts um, in a hash map beforehand, we need to also do for nim plus one because we are encountering a new value nim. So for nim minus one, this value needs to be counted to check if it's um, if it's harmonious against it. And so what we are going to do is check also nim minus one if it's in the occurrence. In that case, we are going to do also max on that, but this time it's going to be minus one. Uh, sorry, this one here shouldn't be there. Um, occurrence of and <coughs> okay, we have one additional. Uh, yes, this is plus one here. Um, Okay, so that should work. Yeah, and with Python syntax, we can make this even shorter, but still using the previous. Um, it's less efficient, but it's like can be written in shorter, can be shorter. So we can just do counter here, as we did before. Uh, but instead of doing the loop, we can use max, which take a list um, or can take like um, a list of values, basically. And so what, are, what we need basically is the occurrence of x, which is what we did here, plus the occurrence of x plus one. And we want to, to do the max between all of these. Which, um, and so what we need is for x to be an occurrence if um, the next value is an occurrence, right? So we are basically using list comprehensions here of Python and if like this, there is no value that exists, so this list is empty. That will cause a problem. So let's, let's just, I'm going to show you. So it works for this, but if we use an empty list, it crashes because we, max can be given an empty sequence. And so to prevent that, we can just say, let me show you here in, um, in a Python, terminal and so if you if we do max so you can see that it's uh, it returns the biggest item um, but the trouble cannot be empty so because if I do this you can see we get that but if we do all here uh, let's say zero so we get if the list is empty we get the value that is in all if we do one we, if it, the list is not empty, you get the value. So we can use this. So let's use this. So that would mean here we should get a list of only zero. If we take the max of one, we will get one this time. So we can use this. Um, so we can do or zero. Um, and this, let's just verify that it still works on this test case. Yep, it does. Okay, that's about it. Okay, see you next time. Bye.